I'm five years old, and I have my whole life planned out. And as I jumped off the school bus that day with my Muppets lunchbox in tow, I could not wait to tell my mom, 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 I know what I want to be when I grow up. Great, sweetie. What? A, a, a politician. Why? Because they help people. <laughs> Little did my mom know that she was responsible for my political aspirations. She raised me on a steady diet of John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. And I saw these great men in front of audiences changing the world. And I knew that if I could give my ideas a voice, if I could help other people give their ideas a voice, that we could all make this world a better place, and that we could all be of service and help people. And as business owners and entrepreneurs, that is what you are here to do. You're here to serve. You're here to help people. But you can't be of service if no one knows who you are. Oh, I have, oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, where is it? <laughs> one of my mentors, Sally Hogshead, says that different is better than better because you could be the best graphic designer, the best insurance agent, the best social media expert, but if no one knows about you, if you don't stand out, you will drown in the sea of sameness. People are distracted, and there's probably not anyone in this room who doesn't have competition, and if you think you don't, come talk to me later, because I'll help you figure that out. <laughs> but when we don't stand out in our business, we become milk. Now let's think about what milk is. You go to the grocery store and you stand in front of that huge dairy case. And it's all milk. It doesn't matter if you buy the high-end organic or the store brand. When you get it home, it's milk. And if that is your business, you're going to end up competing on price because you're a commodity. And commodities compete on price. And you don't want your business to be the low-cost service provider. You're not Walmart. That's not your position in the marketplace. And the way for you to actually beat the competition, defy all of the distractions that are out there, and to not be a commodity in the marketplace is to position yourself as a category of one. And the goal for me today is to help you bring more of you into your business and find your category of one, or as I like to call it, find your positioning power. And positioning power is made up of three components. First, there's your unfair advantage, which we all have, and I'm going to tell you about how to find yours. The ideas that you bring to your business that no one else has. And then finally, the most important component is the clients, the people that you love to serve and that love to work with you. When those three things collide, that is your positioning power sweet spot. So let's first talk about your unfair advantage and what makes you fascinating. 
So you've probably done assessments like Myers-Briggs. You probably know if you're an ENTJ or an INFP, and maybe you know that your D is high, but your I is pretty low, and you know all of your strengths. And all of those things are awesome, but it's all about how you see the world. And Sally Hogshead work in fascination. She's not interested in how you see the world. She wants to know how the world sees you at your best, when you are firing at all gears. And so she has found through her work in branding and marketing that we all speak seven different languages of fascination. And we have access to all of these languages, although two of them are going to feel awesome for you. Like you're firing on all cylinders, you're in that place of flow, and there's going to be one language where it feels like you're drowning in quicksand. Like, oh, no. <laughs> So the seven languages of fascination, briefly, and as I talk about these, think about which one you think that you are. So there is innovation, which is the language of creativity. These are the ideas people. Passion, it's all about relationships and bringing people together and making sure people are happy and heard. Power, the language of confidence. These people are always willing to step up and take leadership. Prestige, the language of excellence, raising the bar, expecting more of yourself. Trust, the language of stability, reliability. You know a trust person because they will always show up on time and they will always be there for you. There's mystique, which is the language of listening and substance. These people, you, you feel listened to by them, but you probably don't know them very well. <laughs> and then finally, alert, the language of details. Not my language. <laughs> so when I first did this assessment, many people who do it, they'll be like in one camp where they're like, yes, this is totally me. Or the other camp, which is like, no way. <laughs> and I was in the other camp. I am a maverick leader, which means in innovation and power. So I speak the language of ideas, and I'm authoritative and take leadership. Except at one point, I was having a conversation with my boss, and I said, man, I am not the creative person at all. I'm the least creative person we have at this company. And he goes, what? Are you kidding me? You're the most creative person we have. Because how you see the world and see yourself in the world is not necessarily how the world sees you. And once I started embracing my maverick leaderness, I realized I needed to make some changes in my business. My business was called Relationally Speaking. Great if I was a passion person, not so great if I'm a maverick leader. It's changed to Communication Rebel. So everything that I do, I want to be rebelling against the status quo, doing something a little bit different and unexpected, and that's what my clients come to me for. So I encourage you, if you're interested, go to howtofascinate.com and find out your unfair advantage because it can change everything in your business. And once you know your unfair advantage, you can start looking at your ideas and how you do business differently. Because your ideas are powerful. They are the key to business success. And your ideas will position you. Because as I mentioned earlier, you want people to either self-select in to your world or self-select out, especially out, because those people are not your people. You don't want to be working with horrible people. But, because there's somebody else who gladly take them for, for you. So your big idea positions you. And I work, when I work with speakers and business owners, I'll ask them a series of questions to figure out what they believe. So one question I want to ask you today, and to think about, what makes you go on a rant? 
What gets under your skin annoys you. It's like nails on a chalkboard. If somebody asks you about this, you're going to go off for 10 minutes straight, no stopping. And the rant, it should scare you a little bit. Like if you're going to post a, something on social media or a blog post, it should be like, ah, they're going to come after me with pitchforks. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and when I first started as a blogger, I realized that my voice was not so great. Like I was an academic. I'm wrote like an academic. And then one day I went to an event and saw a speaker. And she opened her talk with asking everyone in the audience to stand up. And then she made us all clap. And then she sat us down and said, you've given me a standing ovation, now I have to earn it. And I felt so manipulated. The woman next to me took the, took the speaker's order form and started ripping it up loudly so that everyone was hearing. So I went home and wrote this blog post about how not to be a motivational speaker. <laughs> and it scared me. And I pushed publish. The next day, I get an email. Dear Michelle, I love your blog post, How Not to Be a Motivational Speaker. Awesome. I just fired my speaking coach, and I need a new one. Are you interested? Sure. I had no business, but sure, I could do that. I hop on the phone and find out that he's speaking at Barbara Bush's Points of Light Foundation in front of Barbara Bush and all of these famous celebrities. And he was my first client. And I got him because of my rant. Your rants are ravishing to your ideal client. Don't be afraid to share them with the world. The final component of positioning power are your clients. They are the most important people. Now, in your mind, I want you to picture one of your favorite clients. I know you shouldn't have favorites. It's kind of like having a favorite child. But let's face it, we all do. So imagine in your head that that's the person when the phone rings, you're like, yes, yes, I love it when he calls. And think about the transformation that you bring to that client. And answer the question, as a result of working with me, how do my clients change? And even if you sell a product, it's the same question. If they purchase your product, how are you making their lives better? And if you don't know the answer right away, call that favorite client as soon as you are done with the happy hour and ask them, because the answer would surprise you. One of my friends and clients is a great example of the change that she brings to her clients. Her name is Rebecca West, and she's an interior designer. And when you think interior design, you think, make my couch pretty. Pick colors for my wall. Can you redo my bathroom? But Rebecca has a different take. She got this client named Joe, and Joe had just gone through a devastating breakup. He was left with a broken heart and a mattress on the floor and little else. And he wasn't sleeping. He was so anxious. He hired Rebecca to come in and redo his whole place so he wouldn't see her in every corner. So the first thing they did was redo the bedroom. And when that was complete, she was coming back over the next morning to see, to work on the living room. And so she gets there, and she knocks on the door. No answer. Rings the doorbell. Nothing. Bangs on the door. And finally, he stumbles downstairs. His hair is all muscled. And he opens at the door and says, that was the best night's sleep I ever got. Thank you. Because Rebecca changes your environment, so she can change your, her, her, your life.
And that's her result. So what is the result that you're bringing to your clients? How are you making them better, making their lives better? And when you figure that out, and you put that with your unfair advantage of your fascination type and your ideas, that's how you begin to position yourself in the marketplace. So my challenge for each one of you today is first off to be more of you in your business, of course, <laughs> but to take one part of the positioning power. Go home and find out how you fascinate. During the intermission or happy hour, come up to me and tell me about your rant, the thing that you're scared to talk to other people about, because I'll listen. And then I'll encourage you to go do something with it. But I'd love to hear about what makes you go on a, on a rant and your ideas. Or call that client that you love, but maybe haven't talked to in a while, and see how you've impacted their lives. Because we do not have to be politicians to change the world. Thank God. <laughs> but instead, our businesses can serve once we rise above the noise and position ourselves in a category of one. And the only way to do that is to be more of you every day in your business.